Hey up. This is the 3FUL Gear Lanchan Pro 2 and it's probably overtaking the timeless Van Gogh Banshee as the most popular tent for backpacking and wild camping here in the UK. Let's get it set up and see what all the fuss is about. The first thing to notice is this packs down really small and it's very lightweight. It does come with some pegs, mini groundhog style pegs, and a syringe, that's for seam sealing. Uh, we'll get onto that in a bit. There's not actually any seam sealer in with the package. So you probably noticed that there's no poles with it. The Lanshans are trekking pole tents. If you're not someone who uses trekking poles, I won't bother with this. But it does come with the inner and the fly already attached. Pretty straightforward to pitch. So the four corners pegged out and then you want trekking poles at 120 centimetres. So inside here, there's a reinforced area. That's where the, the handle bit of your trekking pole fits. And then you've got adjustment for the top and for the bottom here. It gives you plenty of airflow underneath the tent. There we go. 3FUL gear, Lanshan 2 Pro. First time I've had a go at pitching that, so not too bad. The materials seem very good quality. Undo the zip, and then you release the little hook. I don't know why I've picked another day when it's 30 degrees <laughs> to film a tent video. Very large vestibule area. This is the four season model. So this has got a solid in it, whereas the three season, all this is mesh. You can roll both doors back. Although, <laughs> it would be better if this zip came all the way along there and the whole thing opened up. So now I've got both doors open, I <laughs> might be able to bear sitting in here. This is huge. Look how much headroom there is. <laughs> I reckon I've got eight, 10 inches above me there. I suppose this is where I'd have my head and there's at least a foot and a half at the end there. So unless you're seven foot plus, you're gonna fit in this tent, no bother at all. You could easily fit two people in here. I'm not gonna go into all the specs and details in this video. There's loads of people already done that for this tent. What I thought I'd talk about is why I think that this tent is so popular at the moment and why people are choosing it for backpacking and wild camping here in the UK. So sales of trekking pole tents have gone through the roof here in the UK in the last couple of years. Traditionally, we normally went for pole tents like the Van Gogh Banshee or Terra Nova laser competition. They were designed with UK weather conditions in mind. But thanks to the internet, we get to see campers and backpackers from all over the world. And in places like, you know, America where they're doing long trails like the Appalachian Trail or the CDT, um, they're using lighter weight shelters and they're utilizing the trekking poles that they're already carrying with them um, when they're doing those long hikes. So not too long ago, big walks here in the UK like the Coast to Coast or the Pennine Way were just long walks. Now people are referring to them as through hikes. Um, again, something that has come from America um, and they're using these kind of shelters to do them. So over in America, when they're doing these long trails or through hikes, they're predominantly using these kind of shelters. which saves them a lot of weight because they're not carrying poles which are specifically meant for the tent. They can utilize the trekking poles which they're using anyway, and it saves them a lot of weight and space in the rucksack. Or should I say backpack? So this is also a single skin shelter, which for UK conditions is probably not the best choice. 
because we have very humid and a wet climate. Any condensation that you get that forms on the inside of the fly, if your sleeping bag touches that, it's going to get wet. But they've compensated with that by making the shelter so large. So any condensation in theory should run down here and then drip through there. As long as you're not actually touching the fly, you should be fine. So if you're watching some of Darwin's old videos where he's doing the Pacific Crest Trail or the Appalachian Trail, you'll probably be using this sort of shelter, but it'll be made of Cuban fiber. Um, but that material is incredibly expensive. Those tents, uh, to get them over here, it might be six, seven, eight hundred pounds. Whereas um, this tent, you can pick this up for 150 pounds. So these tents are made of sil nylon, which is much cheaper to produce, uh, much easier to produce but it does weigh more than Cuban fibre, but also it stretches a little bit more, so it might be better for conditions here in the UK. I am dripping like a knackered fridge. Absolutely melting today. 30 degrees, I think it is. So price is obviously a huge factor for why this tent is so popular over here. For 150 pounds-ish, you're getting a huge amount of space in this tent. You're getting decent quality materials. This Sil is very strong. And I weighed the bag before I came out and this was 1,049 grams. So a kilo for a tent of this size ticks an awful lot of boxes. So you're getting reasonably cheap, you're getting a huge amount of space and you're getting lightweight. So this tent is ideal for multi-day hikes such as the Cumbria Way, the Coast to Coast or the Pennine Way. Trekking pole tents are quite sturdy. However, I would be wary of pitching this on Mountain summits, especially if the wind was, was going to be picking up a little bit. But if you guarantee good weather, you're going to have no problems with this at all. So this particular tent is sold as a four season tent. However, when you've got this amount of airflow underneath, if you're going to get some snow or sideways wind, um, I know you can drop this down a little bit, but so I wouldn't say it's meant for snowy conditions. However, this solid inner will keep cold breezes off you in the colder months. So the Lanshan 2 doesn't come fully waterproof unfortunately. It needs seam sealing so all of these panels where they're sewn there's potential for water to get through there. So sil nylon you can't tape the seams properly so you do need to put a bead of silicon down all of these. Anywhere where there's stitching basically that you don't want water to leak through that is where you've got to add the seam sealer. You might be able to buy it with the tent um, but a tube costs you about a tenner from somewhere like Go Outdoors. And it's quite easy to do. Um, plenty of videos on YouTube showing you how to do that. So although these tents are really good out of the factory, if you have a look on some of the other YouTube channels floating around, there's some really good modifications to make these tents even better. I'll probably just leave mine as it is, apart from the seam ceiling. These tents are really straightforward to use. You peg out the four corners, pull out couple of guys to support the poles <laughs> and then you're away. It's really airy in here. It's actually cooler in here now than it is out there. Uh, reasonable little breeze coming through with both doors open. Again that's another feature that makes these so popular is you've got two vestibules and two entrances. Even with a four season inner it feels nice and cool in here. So these tents are all over YouTube and to be honest with you that's one of the reasons that I haven't got one until now. Um, I like to show stuff that, that not everybody else is showing. However, YouTube is a great place to, to, to find out about a product before you, you actually decide to buy it. Um, if you had to buy everything um, just by chance, the amount of times that you'd get things wrong. Um, and again, um, when people like me or other YouTubers they give their opinion on something, it's their opinion. But if you see enough of them that say, yeah, this is good, this is good, this is good, this is good. Eventually there's enough boxes ticked and that you feel confident in buying the product. I'm not trying to sell it to you, by the way, because this particular tent is not for everybody. Not everyone uses trekking poles. Not everyone likes a single skin tent. It might not be the best shelter if you want to be camping on the higher peaks or the summits. Or you might not be the sort of person that wants to walk hundreds of miles for a through hike, or a long walk as I like to call it. I'm really looking forward to getting this out and testing it properly. However, I wanna leave you with a question. So when it comes to buying new bits of gear, I do a lot of research myself. 
I watch plenty of videos, I read articles and online magazines, as well as checking out the reputation of the manufacturer. Uh, I'd be interested to know what you guys do before you part with your hard-earned cash. Do you just trust the judgment of your favorite YouTuber or do you blindly just say, well, I like the look of that and then buy it? Um, times are hard these days, so you can't afford to go chucking your money away on the wrong items. Anyway, that's it for this one. Thanks for watching. I'm gonna dry off. I'll see you next time.